So Lindsay Shiver cried and confessed and her husband, Robert Shiver, hired a private investigator and reportedly confronted her boy toy and thanked him for his care. According to the New York Post, Robert Shiver, 38, hired a pricey, expensive private detective to track down what his wife was doing, Lindsay Shiver. She was on the island or islands of Abaco in the Bahamas. Robert suspected that Lindsay was cheating on him. Turns out he was correct. This man had the money and the means to find out the truth. And now that his wife is in Her Majesty's prison, Bahamas, accused of plotting to do away with him, I'm sure the women of Thomasville and in the surrounding area are lining up like contestants on The Bachelor to win the position of Robert's new wife and stepmom to his three beautiful boys, finding the correct other man. At first, Robert found the wrong man after he paid this private investigator to follow his wife of 13 years to several local bars nearby their house in the exclusive Baker's Bay community. One time, the PI got photos of Lindsay with a local man, but it wasn't her boyfriend. Apparently, this guy that the PI found was the innocent manager for the Grabber's Bar and Grill. Looks like a fun place. When Robert confronted that confused guy, he told Robert, look, I have no idea what you're talking about. But eventually, the private investigator was worth his money, I guess, because he found the correct side peen when the PI called the 36-year-old Lindsay and her boy toy, 28-year-old bartender Terrence Adrian Bethel at Grabber's. So after that, he had the proof. The proof is in the pudding. Robert allegedly thanked Terrence and quipped, thanks for taking care of my wife. That's what Robert reportedly told Terrence after the photos were captured and they will help prove in court Robert's assertions of Lindsay's adulterous conduct that he put in their divorce filings. The private investigator took photos of Terrence and Lindsay in several different locations, including the Nassau Bahamas airports. I'm wondering if Terrence and Lindsay were trotting all over the globe together. Were they leaving Nassau and going off to somewhere else? And then Robert filed for divorce and this big legal battle with his wife of 13 years ensued. Each of them fought for the sole use of their $2.57 million mansion, their three sons, custody of them, and money and possessions, and some more detailed things. At the end of this video, we'll take a deep dive look, like I promise you, into their actual divorce paperwork that I purchased from Georgia. Lindsay was pretty heated about Robert moving money. The bored firecracker housewife. She lived a double life. This Georgia housewife with the lovely kids and the Bahamas bad girl. She got caught up in something really bad. It's sad. That's what a source told the New York Post on Friday. Lindsay's friend said that she did suspect that Lindsay was having an affair and towards the end, Lindsay didn't even keep it a secret, especially once Robert filed for divorce and he cited her infidelity, so the cat was out of the bag. From the outside looking in, it was all perfect, the friend said. She was bored for a long time. Lindsay was a firecracker. I think she thought he was exciting. He was different, the friend went on to say. He's a smooth guy. He likes to socialize with the tourists and the people with second homes here. Makes sense. Terrence is a bartender, so you have to have like a good personality for that type of job. To be honest, I'm sure she fantasized about it as the divorce got nasty and she felt desperate, but it's just, it's hard to believe she would think she could get away with it. A second friend told the New York Post, I'm just really sad for those three kids. They're wonderful. So that second friend is talking about how did Lindsay think she could get away with, you know, Xing Robert off the planet and what, go on and live her life? Lindsay's crying confession and retraction. Just kidding. The Daily Mail reports that Lindsay Shiver sent photos of her ex-NFL player husband Robert Shiver to Bahamas hitman Farron Newbold along with a message reading kill him. Now that sounds pretty damning to me. And they're saying that Lindsay confessed during police interviews to sending those messages seen by the dailymail.com. Lindsay is accused of conspiring with her lover Terrence to hire 29 year old Farron to get rid of her husband Robert. As of today, Sunday, she remains in jail in Nassau despite being granted bail after cops found those messages that led to the three of them getting arrested. First, there was a robbery at Grabber's bar and then came the big WhatsApp messages. But Lindsay has spent 
the past two weeks locked up in the grim Nassau prison after cops uncovered that murder for hire plot in these WhatsApp messages while they were investigating a robbery at the bar. And Lindsay is very much in hot water over conspiring with her lover to enlist the help of Farron, who's also known as Phalo as a nickname, to just take out Robert, who thankfully was not harmed, at least physically, and he was able to get back to the couple's home in Thomasville, Georgia, and safely protect the couple's three sons. According to documents seen by DailyMail.com, Lindsay broke down during her police interview and allegedly confessed to sending photos and messages to Farron, instructing him to get rid of her husband of 13 years. Lindsay's attorney isn't making many statements. His name is Ian Cargill, and he hasn't responded to multiple requests for comment. But even though Lindsay confessed to sending these incriminating text messages. Later, she claimed she wasn't serious about the threat to get rid of her husband, that she was just venting in the midst of a bad divorce. That's what a Bahamian police source told the New York Post. So what is it? Will Lindsay's original confession hold up in court or will they just chalk it all up to her venting? I doubt it. And are these innocent island boys, will they remain innocent until proven guilty or will they be a Acquitted. According to the New York Post, Terrence and Farron couldn't be involved in something like this. At least that's what their friends are saying. That's a joke, man, said a friend of both Terrence and Farron. He's not that type, believe me. He tried to pretend like he is, but he isn't. So I don't know if they just mean Terrence pretends to be like all hard and tough, but he's really not in real life. But both Terrence and Farron, a wannabe music producer, are all over social media. The Daily Mail got photos. Terrence tried to avoid reporters as he arrived to check in at Marsh Harbor Police Station late Friday afternoon. It's one of the requirements of his bail conditions. So you could see he wore a pink grabber's t-shirt and sweatpants and he smiled and hopped back into a black Ford truck before roaring away. Farron, meanwhile, he is the son of a local Marsh Harbor harbor politician and he also works as an engineer for a power company. I wonder how much that son of a politician will go in his favor. But when asked if she believed her son could be moonlighting as a hitman, Farron's mom, Melissa, snapped not interested, so I'm sure his parents are just up in arms over this. An acquaintance of Farron told DailyMail.com that he made for an unlikely hitman. You know, he's not some thug they're claiming. He comes from a good family and has a good job. I've never known him to be involved in anything like this. That's what Farron's friend said. So we know in this case, the guys were released Thursday on $20,000 bail, but Lindsay will have to find a hundred grand in cash and persuade a judge that she does indeed have a place to stay in the Bahamas before she can be released with her electronic ankle monitor. So her parents are willing to buy or rent her home. I'm not sure if that's already been secured. And with her parents allegedly having a lot of money, I'm sure that won't really be a problem. Reportedly, you have to show at least 700 grand in cash you have available, I hear. They want to get her out of Nassau's Fox Hill prison. The conditions and overcrowding are so bad, apparently. That's why, thankfully, Lindsay's parents would have enough grace to get her, I guess, a local place. But the three were arrested on the island of Guana after police figured out the plot late last month before they were flown over to the capital, Nassau. That's where the only prison is located. We saw, of course, the video of the perp walk with the three of them. People are trying to figure out what Terrence looked back and said to Lindsay. Did he say, I love you, I love this or something? And then Farron is seemingly flipping off the camera.
Lindsay's being escorted without handcuffs, it looks like, by a woman. She has beautiful braids and she's just walking along in her high heels. But despite them trying to look so flippant, Lindsay had apparently been hooking up with Terrence for several months. It seems like she was foregoing time with her sons and her husband in order to just play at the Great Guana K or Key in the Sun Steep Abaco Islands, which is part of the Bahamas. But it's actually Robert's family who owns property there in the exclusive Baker's Bay. It's a members only golf resort where a lot of A-listers show up or a lot of A-listers actually live, have mansions there. Michael Jordan, Justin Timberlake, Tom Brady. You see Haley Bieber in photos there. But Lindsay lost her privileges to the luxurious residence and the family's private jet in April after Robert learned of this affair. When we take a deep dive coming up in the back and forth of their divorce papers, you'll see allegations of abuse and everything. But after the cover on the affair was blown, Robert and their three young kids went back to the $2.5 million marital home in Thomasville while Lindsay actually traveled back and forth to the Bahamas to visit Terrence. And in the divorce paperwork, you'll see coming up where Robert cut off some of the automatic bill payments and Lindsay didn't have Wi-Fi. But after all, rumors claim Lindsay had been banished to the pool house. And in the divorce papers, Lindsay claims that Robert kept the kids away from her. So it's it's no wonder she escaped off to the Bahamas. But could you blame Robert for keeping the kids in his safety? Well, especially after he found out about the murder for hire plot, but even prior to that, if he knew anything about any unsafe happenings, maybe that's why he kept the kids away. Rumors claim that the luxurious residence in Baker's Bay would have been the actual crime location. Alleged insiders are claiming that the hit would have been designed to look like a robbery and take place with Robert's family presence doesn't. So, oh my goodness, if that's true, that's really tragic. But, of course, evidence has to come out in court. Quote, it's common knowledge that they were dating. A friend told the Daily Mail about Lindsay's affair with Terrence. It was like a crazy love affair between them. So was it really love between them on both of their parts or just lust, opportunity, or what? Thankfully, the alleged murder plot was uncovered by, quote, happenstance when cops began investigating that break-in at Grabbers. That's the popular waterfront drink spot where so many people look like they come to party and play and even bring their kids. Cops asked staffers, including Terrence, to hand over their phones to inspect, you know, who stole this money. It must have been a lot of money. I hear it could have been 15 grand or more. And that's when they found all these WhatsApp messages where it's, you know, the trio talking about, okay, let's do this. So they were arrested on July 21st and more incriminating messages were found on their devices according to a well-placed source. Now, by this time, when the murder plot was being hatched, Robert was vacationing independently of Lindsay when cops contacted him to warn him about the plot. So he was left, quote, in fear of his life and flew back to the U.S. with their kids shortly afterwards. Yeah, I don't blame him. Imagine Lindsay's there with her boy toy and his friend and Robert's over there at his luxurious residence and she's stewing and trying to get someone to harm him, allegedly. But according to the Daily Mail, a source with knowledge of the investigation predicted that prosecutors may have a hard time proving that Farron actually intended to kill Robert. The source explained he has not confessed and there is little evidence that he agreed to an offer. There is no evidence that he objected either, but of course it will be up to the Crown to prove that he was genuinely prepared to kill Mr. Shiver. So I want to know how much evidence they actually have. So a lot of people, especially internationally, use WhatsApp. So that's a popular means of sharing messages. And maybe they started off innocently at first, but did it get more and more into the planning stages? Will those WhatsApp messages be enough to prove guilt or innocence? And what about, was there any receipt of any income that Lindsay passed on to Farron and Terrence? to get the job done that could you know go against her favor of course all of them will say it was a joke now or like some people claim maybe it was just Terrence and Farron scamming 
Lindsay out of money. Maybe they didn't actually plan to harm anyone, but we'll need to see the actual evidence to reveal what was really about to happen. If, like they're saying, Lindsay literally sent photos of Robert to Farron with the message, kill him, that's pretty damning. You know, did she ever write, just kidding, next to these messages? I wonder things like this. Did Lindsay give Farron the address of the Baker's Bay home where Robert was vacationing separately at the time? Did she give Farron special instructions like when and how to enter the home did she say okay Robert's there now his private plane I checked it got in at this time or you know approach him at midnight did she give him any security codes to the home did she give him you know the layout of the home can they prove this how detailed did it get did Farron purchase or borrow or steal a weapon did he buy gloves and a mask you know all these types of things are what a jury could look at when they're literally determining, okay, were they serious about really taking Robert out or was Lindsay just venting? I don't know how long it'll take, but I hope they get to the truth. Lindsay's new digs. Being caught up in the throes of passion and not forsaking all others has really cost Lindsay her reputation, her family, her houses, her private jet, and much, much more. And isn't it ironic how Lindsay was transported from Great Guana Cay to Nassau with Terrence and Farron, but Lindsay has been locked up even longer than they have at Fox Hill, which has been criticized by Amnesty International because of how squalid the conditions are, the high number of inmates taking their own lives, which is something I hope Lindsay doesn't do. A Supreme Court judge did set Lindsay's bail, but Bahamian officials have to green light her arrangements at a hearing scheduled for Wednesday, so we'll see. Hopefully, as soon as the hearing happens, I know a lot more press is in the Bahamas now, it looks like. Hopefully, we'll see what happens with her. Despite reports to the contrary, Robert did not bail Lindsay out, and Lindsay will have to remain at whatever place she gets to stay in the Bahamas as her case progresses, surrendering her passport and reporting daily to a police station in Nassau until her October indictment. So we can expect to see plenty of paparazzi photos of Lindsay when she gets out, I'm assuming, and she's blessed that her parents even would consider purchasing or renting a home for her. We'll probably see plenty more photos of Terrence and Farron as well since they were granted their $20,000 bail and they were released and they still have to report to the police station in Marsh Harbor, the commercial center of Abaco, and they have to abide by a curfew and more restrictions. But when Farron emerged from his newly built home in the Abaco Islands on Saturday morning, he clutched a green bottle and he took off in his $50,000 Mercedes SUV. So we looked at those buildings building plans before and progress on the house he was putting up on social media. But he is a father of at least one child and he pulled to the side of the road moments after the Daily Mail was trailing him, I guess. He lowered the window and he told the reporter, I've told you guys, I'll speak to you when my lawyer says it's okay. I don't think Farron's lawyer is ever going to say it's okay to speak to the Daily Mail, but I really wish they could have gotten a video of that exchange. So Lindsay faces a whopping sentence ranging from 30 to 60 years if convicted. I'm sure if she spends decades in prison in squalor, her affair with Terrence will definitely be an affair to remember, but not in a positive way. She might feel like she was caught up in love or needed something more exciting than her life in Georgia, but my goodness, oh, people just can't believe she gave up paradise, what it seems, for this. Now, four days after the foiled plot was discovered, the Georgia couple were scheduled to square off in court on July 20th in the Thomas County Superior Court where they had filed counterclaims against each other in this hostile battle, which we'll go over in a second. Right about now, I bet Terrence likely wishes he heeded the words of Proverbs 5, 1 through 6. My son, be attentive to my wisdom, godly wisdom learned by costly experience. Incline your ear to my understanding that you may exercise discrimination and discretion, good judgment, and your lips may reserve knowledge and answer wisely to temptation. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey like a honeycomb, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter like the extract of wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold of Sheol, the netherworld, the place of the dead. 
so that she does not think seriously about the path of life. Her ways are aimless and unstable. You cannot know where her path leads. Now, let's dig deep into these divorce papers. I just bought another PDF. Here we go. Okay, so we've got first April 5th. We've got Robert Shiver hitting out a divorce, filing the first complaint for divorce. In essence, Robert Shriver just stated he's a resident of the state of Georgia. He's resided there longer than six months. A lot of standard stuff. He says that Robert and Lindsay were married on or about March 6, 2010 and will separate at the filing and service of this complaint. Robert shows that Lindsay may be served with this action at the marital residence, that huge multi-million dollar home in Thomasville, Georgia. Robert intends to live separate and apart from Lindsay and intends to pursue a divorce decree in this matter. They talk about the three minor children, their names and when they were born, and the fact that Robert is a fit and proper parent, and he seeks joint legal and primary physical custody of the party's minor children with reasonable rights of visitation to defendant. Now, Lindsay's going to hit back at this, and that's one thing I don't quite understand sometimes. Okay, this is April 5th and he's seeking joint legal and primary physical custody of their three children. This is what I don't understand when some people get divorced. If you're a couple and you know, you've caught someone in adultery or whatever the reason, irreconcilable differences, you get divorced. I don't know why some people go for sole primary custody of the children, unless now, of course, Robert at this point, when it was filed, he didn't know about any, this is April 5th. This is before they posed in that lovely Easter photo. He is risen together with Lindsay wearing white. I don't know why some people go for sole custody of the children. He doesn't know about any plot that's been hatched yet. But if the rumors are true, if he had seen the video of Lindsay allegedly with her boy Tori doing whatever was so despicable that people seem to infer Fur. I'm not sure how deep down and dirty and nasty that video got. If there were abusive substances, then I can understand why, of course, Robert wouldn't want his children anywhere near Lindsay. But wouldn't he have put that in the filing? I haven't seen it yet in the filing. And of course, he reserved the right to add more. He talked about her adulterous conduct, adulterous conduct. But you would think he would put that perhaps in the initial filing, if there was something he knew, Lindsay is doing something dangerous that I don't want my boys exposed to, I would expect to find that in the paperwork too. I just hope it's not one of those things where some couples where you know how they go through these nasty divorces and the children become pawns instead of just agreeing to, I don't know, 50-50 custody or you don't want the kids moving around everywhere. I get it. But as long as you know the other parent isn't dangerous, which Lindsay is proving she is though, but why don't some couples just go for shared custody? I don't understand why some people immediately go for the jugular and say, I'm taking the kids. Maybe that's not this instance, but that is a sticking point and I always wondered about. They talk more about the minor children live with both the husband and wife since birth. They've lived with them in Thomas County, Georgia. They talk about the marriage being irretrievably broken and Robert is entitled to a divorce from the defendant. It does say he reserves the right to add additional grounds for divorce once discovery is completed. So maybe that's what Robert was waiting for. I don't know the rest of the private investigator stuff to come out. I don't know how much he knew at this point, April 5th. He just wanted to get this filing in. Maybe he would have added more grounds like, you know, there was substance abuse if that rumor is true or this or that. And if so, it would have gone much more in his favor if Robert could prove look, here's the video judge. She's with her boy toys. She's doing all these crazy things. If it's true, if she did any, you know, substances, of course, judges wouldn't want young children around any of that. And Robert would have looked like the safe bet. And yeah, here you go. You take primary custody of the kids. So they knew that Robert at this point, once after a complaint for divorce has been filed, no transfer of property by either party except a bona fide transfer and payment of pre-existing debts shall pass title so as to avoid the vesting thereof according to the final verdict of the jury in this case. But Lindsay's going to strike back and she's going to accuse Robert of moving around money. She'll even have a screenshot and everything in there. Property and all that stuff will come out pending the final determination of the court, the right of either party 
party of alimony. That's going to be a big sticking point. It says plaintiff shows that the parties have accumulated certain real and personal property during the course of the party's marriage, which would include the party's marital residence. They talk about equitable division. Robert seeking an equitable division of any and all other properties accumulated by the parties during the course of the marriage. And Lindsay's going to hit back at that too. This legal paperwork can be so tricky. This is where Robert claps at Lindsay and she'll clap back too. Robert shows that Lindsay is able-bodied and able to work as she graduated from Auburn University with a marketing degree in spring of 2009 and therefore is not entitled to alimony either periodic or lump sum. Lindsay's going to take issue with that too. So they start talking about custody. He wants to give Lindsay at this point reasonable rights of visitation to Lindsay. Robert requests a trial by jury in accordance with Georgia law. They want a total divorce. You know, they'll break down further, more property later. In essence, they talk about the kids and he's talking about permanent use of his marital residence, permanent use of the vehicle he's now driving, equitable division of any and all properties accumulated by the parties during the course of the marriage, and a trial by jury. So that was the first filing in their divorce. The very next day, Lindsay hits back, April 6th. So comes now Lindsay's complaint. Lindsay Shirley Shiver, she's the plaintiff. She is a resident of Georgia more than six months and she talks about serving Robert at the home. The same deal, the date they were legally married. Lindsay is entitled to a divorce based on yeah the marriage is irretrievably broken no hope whatsoever for reconciliation other fault-based grounds not stated at this time in hopes that the parties can resolve this case amicably that's interesting they talk about the three minor children and where they reside and how they've been residing with Robert and Lindsay for at least the past five years. And now she's arguing, look, the best interest and welfare of said minor children require that, you know, Lindsay be given primary physical custody of their three children with Robert having visitation with the children as the court deems appropriate. So they're each fighting for primary physical custody. Is that using the kids as pawns or is that using the kids as, okay, whoever has primary custody. If Lindsay got primary custody, how much child support would she get? Because Robert doesn't want to give up alimony because of the adulterous conduct. Or what is it? It makes you wonder. And Lindsay's saying that Robert is able-bodied and should be required to support said children on both a temporary and permanent basis as dictated by the Georgia Child Support Guidelines. So she's like, look, he should also be required to continue to provide health care health insurance for both Lindsay and the children and required to continue paying the children's uninsured health-related costs. Lindsay wanted to be awarded an equitable division of all marital property, both temporarily and permanently. She talks about her and Robert accumulating the following marital property during the marriage, which is subject to equitable division in this case. They're talking about the $2.577 million mansion, which has indebtedness to Thomasville National Bank in both of their names. She talks about her 2021 Cadillac Escalade motor vehicle indebted in the husband's name, driven by the wife on a daily basis, allegedly what she called the Black Widow, according to Facebook rumors. The Ford F-250 truck, free and clear of debt and traditionally driven by Robert. There's a Can-Am ATV. There's a boat and a Sea-Doo. There's business interest in something called Southern Shivers and Sons LLC, but I couldn't find anything about that company. There's joint bank accounts with T and B. There's the husband's retirement account and the wife's retirement account. Other retirement and financial holdings, furnishing and furniture, and there may be also other assets. So she wanted a good split of everything. Lindsay shows that she's in need of an order giving her use and possession of the marital residence, the huge multi-million dollar Georgia mansion, and its contents for her and the children to use both temporarily and permanently. So she wanted to stay in that house with the pool. So they talk about, again, no transfer of anything after this divorce filing goes through. And this is the part where Lindsay is asking for the marital debts to be equitably divided, both temporarily and permanently. Wife shows that the parties have incurred debts which are far beyond her means to pay. Wife asks that Robert be ordered to pay these obligations. It reads that Lindsay shows she depends on her husband's financial support and that she will continue to be dependent on his financial 
financial support for some time to meet the household obligations of herself and the minor children. Lindsay therefore requests that Robert be required to pay alimony to her on a monthly basis, both temporarily and permanently. Lindsay shows it is necessary that she employ an attorney to represent her in these proceedings and that Robert should be required to pay a reasonable attorney's fee to said attorney along with all costs of litigation pursuant to the Georgia law. She's requesting a jury trial as well, and she's requesting a divorce, obviously, equitable division, all the stuff. That's when she also filed later on May 2nd comes Lindsay's answer and counterclaim to some of the stuff that Robert alleged in his initial filing. So some stuff that she goes along with, it's like, okay, these allegations are admitted, so we don't have to go back over that stuff. We'll go over the stuff that she disagrees with. So the part where Robert said he's a fit and proper parent and shows that he seeks joint legal and primary custody of the party's minor children with reasonable rights of visitation to Lindsay. Lindsay? Lindsay is like, no, these allegations are denied. Lindsay has been the children's primary caregiver throughout their lives. So she's hitting back. She doesn't want Robert to have primary custody of the kids at that point. And of course, the adulterous part she hit back against, where Robert says he is entitled to a divorce from Lindsay based upon her adulterous conduct pursuant to the provisions of Georgia law. Lindsay wrote, any extramarital relationship defendant has had was during the party separation and legally condoned by the husband. Now the big question here is when did they actually separate? If Robert was still, you know, quote unquote, happily married to Lindsay and he's suspecting her of cheating, I don't know when this PI was hired, but the PI is hired. And if the PI has hard evidence allegedly of Lindsay hooking up with Terrence, that's pretty damning. I'm not sure when they supposedly separated, but if they had not been legally separated, Robert and Lindsay, and she's trying to claim any extramarital relationship she had was during their separation and quote, therefore legally condoned by the husband, that won't fly. That would not have flown even before this alleged murder plot if Robert has the hard evidence from a PI. Now, another thing Lindsay is hitting back is the property where Robert, this is tricky, where Robert says both parties have accumulated certain real and personal property during the course of the party's marriage, which would include their marital residence. And he further shows that he seeks an equitable division of any and all other properties accumulated by the parties during the course of the marriage. Lindsay's complaint is denying that as stated. She wrote, both parties are entitled to an equitable division of said property. So I don't really know how that's different than what Robert had written, unless it's just like legalese. Both of them accumulated certain real and personal property during the course of their marriage, including the marital residence. And it further shows that Robert seeks an equitable division of any and all other properties accumulated by the parties during the course of the marriage. So I don't know how that differs from what she counterclaimed, both parties are entitled to an equitable division of said property. It's just weird legalese, but we know that Robert wanted, both of them wanted that main mansion sole use of it. And now she's saying both are entitled to an equitable division of it. I think she would have made out just fine without this crazy murder plot. Even if she didn't get alimony, we don't know how the custody of the children would have worked out. We don't know what kind of proof Robert has. I mean, it's a fault divorce. It's not a no-fault divorce. So it's like she may not have won alimony, but if she would have won, I don't know, some sort of physical custody of the children, she would have gotten child support. And I believe she would have gotten an equitable division of their property. Not necessarily if the home in Baker's Bay is still owned by Robert's parents or the jet is still in his parents name I don't know these things but if that's true maybe she wouldn't have gotten that stuff and of course yes her lifestyle would have gone down you know she would have oh my goodness but she could have just still had a pretty penny from what they own and fine she could have moved off to the Bahamas and hung out with her boyfriend forever if he still would have had her the other thing Lindsay hit back upon is Robert's complaint that Lindsay is an able-bodied person able to work as she graduated from Auburn University with a marketing degree in the spring of 2009 and is therefore not entitled to either alimony, periodic, or lump sum. 
Her response was, the allegations contained in that paragraph are denied. The defendant has not worked outside the home in some time and now has only limited employment opportunities. Now, I understand that part. I understand both sides you can see if there was no murder plot. People know, okay, stay-at-home moms, yeah, if you give up your corporate career, and I don't really know what Lindsay did before she had children, but let's say you give up your corporate career, you're raising kids for 10, nearly 20 years. Yeah, it might be difficult to jump back into the workplace, so that's why a lot of times women are awarded alimony, and rightfully so in many instances. I mean, I agree, sometimes it gets outrageous, but rightfully so because they're being paid for the time that they could have been building a career. So if the wife was home raising the kids, you know, that's the salary of a nanny, of a maid, of a, you know, you name it, and you're doing all these things. So it was a little, I guess, slick of Robert to say, look, she had her degree. She can jump back in the, the workforce. Now we know that's not necessarily true, but I agree with him in that, yeah, he wouldn't want to be shelling out 20 grand a month or whatever it would have been for Lindsay to go, you know, hop on the price a jet. I see why he banned the use of that too. And go hang out with her boy toy and spend money on him or if there's illicit substances involved. So I understand why he would have said she's not entitled to alimony. But the way it's phrased, I mean, I see why Lindsay hit back. The whole lesson in this, these divorce papers, is that let the courts and the Lord work it out. Lindsay should have just been patient, kept filing these filings like she was doing, and gone ahead with the court dates. Who knows what type of judge or favor she might have gotten, and she may very well have got a favorable outcome or fair and equitable for both of them. The adultery would have nullified the alimony, but again, like I say, maybe she could have gotten child support and the equitable division of property and whatever that would have, you know, met it out to a lump sum of something. If the court would have said, okay, neither of you can live in that home and you have to sell it or whatever, it would have been enough money okay, maybe she couldn't have played in the land of the rich in Baker's Bay like she wanted, but I think she still would have been pretty well off. The other thing Lindsay hit back on is Robert wanting primary physical custody of the children. Her lawyer at the time wrote, it is not in the children's best interest for the father to have primary physical custody of them. So it's saying that the defendant, having fully answered, prays that the plaintiff's complaint for divorce be dismissed and that all relief requested therein be denied. It has been necessary for the defendant to incur attorney's fees and cost of litigations. Now, this is where she hits back with some pretty damning accusations. Quote, husband's acts of domestic violence have physically injured the wife. Wife feels unsafe in the marital home and has installed locks on the interior doors of the home for protection. Husband has abused the wife in the home in the children's presence on multiple occasions, not only physically but also mentally and emotionally. Wife requests the entry of a proper restraining order to shield her and the children from such abuse going forward. Now this is vital and I didn't mean to like poo-poo it or push it aside in my other videos but but I wonder if there's any truth to this. And if so, when did it happen? I'm wondering if when Robert, you know, saw those damning photos and videos and whatever the heck he saw from the private investigator or wherever from the house, wherever it came from, and then he was in Lindsay's presence again. You know, that's a dangerous time when you're breaking up and divorcing and emotions are involved. Is that when Lindsay is alleging this abuse happened? Or did it happen previously in previous years? I know some people so easily say, oh, well, if he was doing that to you, you should have just left him. You know, especially in this instance, you had the means, you had the money. So I don't know. I don't want to like push aside what she's alleging here, but I also also wonder, did she just throw this into her divorce complaint to make Robert look bad or is it the truth? And that's what I'm waiting to see. Does she have any proof? Can they unfortunately talk to the children and interview them and say, oh, did you ever see daddy being mean to mommy or hitting mommy? Those boys are old enough to, you know, know what they witnessed, at least especially the older two boys. So I don't know where this will go. If it's true, this is where the rumors are claiming that Lindsay was venting to her boyfriend. They wonder allegedly, you know, was she telling Terrence, oh, Robert's abusing me and I 
hate him and oh I wish he was just gone off this earth and that's where was Terrence really in love with Lindsay and was he looking like oh I can rescue her don't you worry babe you know I'll get this guy fair and we can take care of him and then we'll have all the money and you won't have to worry about not getting paid alimony because all these assets will be in your name and we can just live our lives off and I don't have to be a bartender anymore we can just live a life of wealth is that what happened I don't know this is a sticky wicket so they go over the furnishings and the property and the joint bank accounts and all that as well and now the other document I just purchased today even though it's from May 2nd 2023 this is Lindsay's motion to attach Robert for contempt they have her attorney of record at the time but this attorney has withdrawn of course after all the murderous plot came out so in essence there's a standing order Lindsay is saying you're supposed to refrain from doing any of the following acts if you have a divorce action in place you're not supposed to take any action within a marital financial account that wastes secrets or hides or otherwise changes the status quo of the financial situations of the parties except for reasonable transfers and expenditures within the normal expenses I guess of the business and marital relationship however it also states the court expects the parties are to continue paying for the marital bills in the same manner they have historically been doing prior to the filing of the action and the financial status quo of the marriage is to be maintained including providing financial support to one party if that has been the historical practice of the parties and they're not supposed to transfer any monies out of bank accounts and stuff but Lindsay will start to complain that's exactly what Robert's doing and it does seem like it gets a little petty here well I know of course Robert would have been over the moon angry seeing whatever he saw his wife doing and finding out her cheating ways and again like I keep saying if there was any reports of substance abuse I mean to me it should have been included in the paperwork by now then the court could have understood Robert more about why he did certain things and Lindsay is saying look you know I should keep getting whatever privileges and money I was getting while this marriage is still it's not final yet her lawyer wrote husband has told wife he is cutting off her access to funds and he has indeed done so which again you can't blame Robert you don't want Lindsay using her money to go fly off and spend it on Terrence the parties reside in a mansion have children in private school own a private jet and have always traveled on said private jet for personal and business related purposes and have an overall expensive lifestyle in general suddenly husband is not permitting wife to use the jet or have access to funds for running the household as she historically has done these parties have a status quo involving much greater wealth than in the normal case but the standing order is clear that the status quo is to be maintained <laughs> that's kind of like the nerve of Lindsay like so what you know she's like off cheating with her Bahamian boyfriend but my status quo in Thomasville and the Bahamas and Bakers Bay should be maintained plaintiff husband is not permitted to unilaterally change the way the parties have functioned financially and in their lifestyle style as a way of punishing the wife or to reduce wife's ability to fund or function in this litigation so she wants to you know fight the good fight here but she wants access to Robert's money to do it the standing order precludes one party from hiding or secreting the children from the other party and interfering with the ability of a party to communicate with the children now this is where she says husband in this case took the children out of town last weekend repeatedly refused wife contact with the children then refused for a period of time to bring them back to the marital residence until law enforcement officials became involved so yeah this is where it gets petty and again this is May he doesn't know about any murder plot but I hope it wasn't done out of pettiness I hope it was done for the children's protection now even if you're going through a horrible horrible divorce and he caught his wife cheating and I can understand why he wouldn't really want the boys to be around her I can understand and why Robert would take the kids away maybe for a fun weekend just to forget things but I don't know when you start playing pawns with the kids well what harm would it be to hand the kids the iPhone and say here's mommy on FaceTime just say hi you know it's okay for you to talk to her but maybe he he didn't want the children to tell Lindsay where they were or something like that it talks about him canceling the internet service at the home of the children which I don't understand it says husband has turned off the automatic payments of the household you 
utility bills, which resulted in the disconnection of the household internet service wife needs for the home. Now that part, I'm not sure uh, why that was done. To me, that's where it gets a little petty. Of course you're angry. Of course you don't want her, Robert might not want Lindsay benefiting from all these things he's provided, but I don't know, why would you turn off the automatic bill paying for the utilities? I can understand if she had an account at Barney's or something, you don't want to buy her shoes and clothes anymore. I understand all that. You're not going to lavish her with flowers like he would do just because. Of course he would be so hurt and devastated, but on your marital home, why turn off the, the utilities? I mean, it talks about, I don't know how many household utilities bills, it turned off the automatic payments and it resulted in the disconnection of the household internet service the wife needs for the home. So was he turning that off so she couldn't be online or I don't know where it gets a little petty and maybe then of course making no excuses for Lindsay but did it ratchet up the divorce even more and there's no excuse for her to do what she did but I just see divorces where they get so petty they drag on for so long the lawyers are the ones that are getting paid sometimes fueling the fire adding to this fight I don't know if it needed to go this far and this is where somewhere in here the financial issues where she's going to complain she has a screenshot here transfers from different bank accounts. So you see a transaction of $12,000 on April 4th, $22,000 April 7th, April 14th, $50,000 being transferred April 21st, $8,000 being transferred April 27th, $6,000 being transferred. So that's exhibit B and that's where apparently Robert is allegedly transferring money out of perhaps I believe their joint account. It's in here somewhere. I wish I could do a control find on this PDF. She's complaining that he's not supposed to be transferring out money and she has the proof allegedly that he was. So yeah, obviously I believe, you know, both parties hurt each other. I don't know why Lindsay took this route to whether she was bored or whether she really was being abused. And I have to give that caveat, you know, if, of course, initially I just did not believe her at all. I thought she was just throwing that in there to just make Robert look bad. And that still could be the case, but I can't just push away allegations so flippantly like that. But the problem is Lindsay, no matter how dirty these divorces get, you never want it to get to the point where it's like, oh, I wish my spouse wasn't alive and you start venting and and then it gets ratcheted up and that's where the problem that's where the biggest mistake of her life will be it seems so i think it's a learning lesson especially for anyone going through a divorce i know emotions get involved especially when there's a lot of money if possible if the children can be safe i would say either the husband or the wife shouldn't go for full custody primary custody only if they're doing it just to hurt their spouse only if they're doing it just to keep the kids away from that spouse because you know that would hurt them. Now, if they're doing it to protect them, I totally understand that. But then when you start, okay, yeah, canceling automatic payments, some of the utilities of the home, I don't know all these details. We'll see in further divorce documentation. But if anything's being done to be petty, I think that's what gets sad. And the divorce, you know, they can get so mean and so contentious. And obviously, Lindsay took it way to heart and she took it in the worst way possible. If she was going to vent to her boyfriend, fine, then just vent but don't say yeah this is my husband and get rid of him she made allegedly that switch where she wasn't patient enough to wait it out and see what georgia courts would have done in all these instances it reminds me of corey richens or all these instances where people panic they're going through a divorce they maybe envision in their mind the worst thing ever and yeah it might be a hard road to hoe for a while especially for a woman who's used to her riches and used to her thomasville life and used to her Lily Pulitzer, which, I mean, who cares anyway, you know, <laughs> like, and used to the vacations and the travel and the flossing and the flexing on Instagram. It's okay to let all of that stuff go, go through a divorce and see what the courts determine. That's what Lindsay should have done instead of allegedly taking matters into her own hands. I mean, the first mistake, of course, was having the affair. I'm not trying to act holier than thou and above it all. Everyone has problems. There are problems in marriages. Stuff can happen. You decide what you can forgive and what you you can't. If her marriage to Robert was so bad, I wish she could have just decided I'm going to divorce him before there was any adultery. And she could have gotten perhaps the alimony she wanted, make a clean
clean break, a clean getaway, let the courts decide the child custody, and then go off and live your life and not do it in an underhanded way, going to get a boyfriend, sneaking around, getting caught by the PI, and then plotting to have him gone. Like some people get so crazy to win, like the money is not worth it all. As much as, you know, I can crave wanting to go there and hang out on a beach and relax and oh my goodness, sitting in the, the water and the pools and all that, what seems like a beautiful lifestyle, none of that is worth, like, I gotta win, I gotta win, I gotta win, you know, because heaven, as believers, that's our home, this is in our home, and so I don't understand, too, with Lindsay being a believer, how she could have thought, this is the way to go, I'll make it look like a robbery, have him taken out, no well, the boys will have to be mine, and this 2.577 million dollar mansion will have to be mine, and that private jet will have to be mine, and I'll live the life of luxury, who would think that way, it's like your deeds would haunt you, so it's too bad it turned out this way, but I definitely want to keep following this, of course, and many other cases, so thank you so much for watching another deep dive into the Shivers series, and so we'll move on with other cases too, but I'll keep bringing the updates. Thank you for watching so much.